Hello, my name is Anna and I love trying vintage recipes. And today I'm bringing you a full day of meals from the 1980s. This is my decade. This is when I was born. This is the decade that holds all of my earliest memories. And I'm also doing something a little bit different and really, really exciting. I am taking you all on a field trip with me. So some of my best food memories, some of my best memories in general are of school field trips. And on those school field trips, you would have to pack a special brown bag lunch. You'd pack a lunch to take to the zoo or to a museum or wherever you were going. I'm not gonna tell you where we're going just yet. You're gonna have to wait until tomorrow. And here's the cookbook that I'm gonna be using today. We have Southern Living 1982 Annual Recipes. And this was given to me by my dear friend, Sarah. I can't wait to use it. This is the only like Southern Living cookbook that I have. And I'm gonna be basing all of my recipes on food that I ate growing up. My mom cooked a lot and she did love to try recipes, but there were certain things that she would make over and over again that maybe she didn't necessarily use a recipe for. So when I was creating my menu, I kind of wrote those things down and I found a cookbook that has some interesting variations on those dishes. So that's that's kind of how I came up with what I'm gonna be making today. So this cookbook is basically every recipe that was published in Southern Living in 1982. And it's, it's like arranged by month. So it's not like a chapter on soups, a chapter on salads, whatever. It's like, these recipes appeared in the month of February, in the month of March, whatever. But for my first recipe, I'm gonna be making this cottage egg salad spread. This one's a little bit different. Usually when I make egg salad, it's just like chopped up hard cooked eggs with some mayonnaise and seasonings. This doesn't have any mayonnaise in it. It has cream style cottage cheese. Now for my understanding, cottage cheese is kind of having a moment right now. I hear things buzzing about cottage cheese. This one really kind of piqued my interest. This recipe starts with an ingredient that I unfortunately was unable to find cream style cottage cheese. So I had to come up with a substitute. I read several blog posts and articles. They said to make a substitute, all you had to do was take regular cottage cheese with a 4% fat content and puree it until it's smooth. And that left me with this. You're also going to need some hard cooked eggs. I feel like hard, hard cooked eggs and their cooking method can be hotly debated. Basically just use your favorite way of cooking them. So I put three eggs into a pan and covered them with cold water. I brought that water to a boil, turned the heat off, and then covered the pan and let it sit for 10 to 12 minutes. And then after that amount of time was up, I removed the eggs and placed them in an ice bath for 12 or so minutes as well. Combine all ingredients and mix well. Okay, so I'm gonna chop these up, slippery little guys. I know some people swear by cooking them in the Instant Pot. I'm, I'm usually not cooking that many at one time, so getting the Instant Pot out would be a lot. Three is about the most I'm gonna do all at once. I cut this recipe in half and that just feels like a lot of eggs. I'm gonna add my cream cottage cheese substitute and a few spices and things. So I have here, well, I messed it up, but that's pepper, that's dry mustard, and that's dry dill. So that all goes in. A bit of salt and then also some fresh chives. And I'm pretty excited about those. I think that's gonna lend a lot of great flavor. Normally I would wait until lunchtime tomorrow to have my first taste of this, but I kind of want to see what it tastes like right now and then compare it to how it tastes tomorrow. I have just like a saltine here. I figured kind of a plain vehicle. <laughs> so that's what we're looking at. That is really good. I mean, I really like egg salad to begin with, so that helps. It's already really tasty. Did I get crumbs all over my shirt? I sure did. You can really taste those chives. The cream style cottage cheese, like, puree up some cottage cheese <laughs> and use it in your egg salad. I wanna do just a little bit more prep work for my big field trip tomorrow. And you have to tell me if you did this or maybe like if your mom was packing your lunch, if she did this. Wrapping pop cans. If you're from the Midwest like me, we say pop in aluminum foil if you're gonna be taking them somewhere. 
keep in mind that this is a field trip, this is a special occasion, and I'm gonna be making some special occasion food. A can of pop would not have been an everyday occurrence in like a lunch I would take with me to school. It is a special occasion. You're not allowed to come after <laughs> my mom or me or anybody for their choices. I mean, if you ask other 80s kids, I am gonna guess that they're gonna tell you they had the can of pop wrapped in aluminum foil for a special field trip. <laughs> so we're having Fago root beer because we definitely didn't have brand name pop in the house. I'm also gonna cut up, uh, you know, some carrot sticks. It's baby carrots, not a thing until much later. Like I don't remember baby carrots coming about at least where we shopped much later in elementary school, maybe like 1990, 1991, something like that. I still prefer hand cut carrot sticks to this day. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble parts of my lunch. I'm recycling an old <laughs> Mitchell's ice cream paper bag. Let's see, where do I wanna start? I'll probably assemble the sandwich tomorrow morning, but I have my carrot sticks. I'm gonna let some air out of those. And I'll let my can of pop just kind of stay in the fridge. Field trip lunch meant Pringles, not this whole can. They didn't have individual kinds of like small cans when I was a kid. There's two and a half servings in here. Oh, does that seem right? Probably about like that. It was always Pringles for chips, mostly because I think the idea was that they held up a little bit better en route. This is the key, a hostess snowball. Always a hostess snowball for a field trip. So if you don't know what this is, inside there's chocolate cake with like a creamy filling, and then it's covered in a layer of marshmallow and then covered in a layer of pink coconut. And I know these come in different colors depending on the time of year. So I'm gonna end my prep work there and I will see you tomorrow morning at breakfast. This morning's breakfast is gonna be something I ate a lot as a kid. At least I remember. Cocoa Wheats. I haven't had these in years. I haven't really even talked to a lot of other people who grew up eating them, but we had these a lot, especially on cold mornings. Also, no coffee this morning because I'm making things that I grew up eating and I remember having a lot of mint tea and there's a very good reason for that. I'm a pretty anxious person, so you can imagine that I was a very anxious child and a lot of times mint tea would help settle my stomach. A little bit of an upset tummy because I was nervous or excited about something. And as today is going to be a field trip day, I probably would be very excited about taking a field trip. <laughs> and then let that steep while I cook my cocoa wheats. According to package directions, I need to Bring one cup of water to a boil. And you can actually add sugar and salt to this, but I'm not going to. I usually added things, you know, if I wanted to, I would add them after. My water is boiling, the cocoa wheats. I need to add that to the boiling water and then stir it constantly for 30 seconds. Cover it up, let it sit for one to two minutes. Um, cocoa wheats, they're cream of wheat with some cocoa added. I don't know that there's any sugar already added to this or maybe there is, I'm not sure. My brother and I grew up eating quite a lot of hot cereal and here's, here's how the mornings usually worked out. My mom worked nights from the time I was about probably eight years old up through, I mean, well past even when I left home. And so she would come home in the morning, wake us up, make us breakfast and get us to school all before she was, able to go and try to get some sleep for herself. So I'm gonna give this a try after all these years. It's pretty good. I really wanna add a little bit of sugar. I'll probably just, you know, add a little sprinkling of sugar. I like cream of wheat, I like oatmeal. I know texturally it's really difficult for some people, but this would be a great breakfast if it was cold out, if it was snowing out. My mom always talked about stick to your ribs breakfast, so hot things that would stick with you until lunchtime. And now for my peppermint tea. Let's be honest, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak in some coffee later because I need it. But I do love peppermint tea. It's probably one of my favorite types of tea. Pretty simple breakfast this morning. Not really a recipe per se, but this is reflective of what I would have eaten for breakfast as a kid. So I am gonna finish this up and then I'm gonna prep my egg salad sandwich and then it's time for the field trip. I'm gonna stir this up just a little bit. That is what it looks like. And to be honest, 
I think I'm used to something that's like a little drier than this, but when I tried it on a cracker yesterday, it did taste really good. I'm also kind of thinking that maybe like the liquid in the cottage cheese separated out a little bit. Let's hope it works out okay. Whenever I had a sandwich in my lunch for a field trip, it was always on a bun, but I think the idea was that maybe a bun would hold up a little bit better in transit. I really, really wanted to find, <laughs> sometimes Meyer has buns in a four pack. They didn't this time because it, it takes me a long time <laughs> to use up a package of buns. Luckily, I do have a vintage sandwich video that I'm planning, so hopefully I can use some of those up. I'm just gonna do a little at a time because I don't want it to get too messy. This is, yeah, this is not exactly the consistency I'm used to. And we'll see how it travels, but it is a little bit, it's a little bit looser <laughs> than it was yesterday. Let's put it that way. It's gonna be tricky, <laughs> tricky to do any more than that. But that's what my little sandwich is looking like. Okay. <laughs> It's a slippery sandwich, oh no. This is not going exactly how I envisioned it, but there we are. <laughs> Can of pop on the bottom. We're gonna go carrot sticks next. Who wants to be next? Maybe, maybe the snowball. I don't think it's gonna get too smushed. And then I think I'm gonna do sandwich. And then chips on top, just because they're pretty lightweight and I don't want them to get too broken up. All right, we've arrived. Time for the field trip. Here's where I've brought you. We are at the salvage yard. This is one of my favorite little resale shops to find vintage goodies, vintage books, all kinds of things. Let's take a look inside. Had to make a little side trip to half price books. park I had planned to come to to have lunch there's like some weird carnival going on the skies you know they've turned a little threatening as well so we're gonna do the best we can my lunch is kind of like off to the side here so I've got my little egg salad sandwich here it kind of leaked so this might be best suited to eating right away not packing in a lunch but I'm gonna taste it anyway and the flavor is really good I did pack a napkin thank goodness but it's it's like kind of leaking out so I would say make the sandwich, eat it right away on a plate. Maybe put it in a, like a little container where it can lay flat, but tasty, good flavor. Carrot sticks, of course, I know what they taste like. I think they would probably be good dipped in the egg salad. Good and crunchy. Got my Pringles. No, I did not make these. <laughs> that would be amazing though. This is my root beer. Let's see how cold it stayed. Wrapping it in this foil. You can see. Delicious, but I'm also realizing now that I've opened this, I cannot put it back in the bag. I have to carry it back to my car. It's fine. And my dessert is the 
famous hostess, Snowball. What is happening right now? <laughs> this is going to be the best video ever. Okay, this makes up for it. It's so good. It's got that cream filling. It is a great packed lunch. Do you remember your first field trip? Because I really do remember mine. It had to be like either 1986 or 87. And it was to a place called Children's Wonderland, I think it was called. And basically, maybe they do this in other places too, I'm not sure. But basically it was a big sports arena or a big venue. They would take the space and just fill it with like holiday vignettes and lights. Kind of like little animatronic things. And it was just like all Christmas themed. If I can find photos, I will drop them in here. I don't know if I'm describing it well, but it was quite a thrill. But if you remember your very first field trip, please let me know in the comments. Well, the weather has really taken a turn today. <laughs> this is like full on, we might have a power outage. So I'm going to film for as long as I can and we'll see what happens. Oh my gosh, did you hear that? It's a little bit early yet, but I'm going to get started on dinner. And part of it is going to be this vegetable burger soup. The reason I'm getting started so early is because I'm going to convert this recipe into a slow cooker recipe. There are lots of articles and blogs out there that'll tell you how to do this. I can link the one that I followed in the description down below. Sometimes there are some ingredient modifications that you have to make. This one's going to be pretty straightforward because it's just like a hamburger vegetable soup. You know, I don't have to reduce the liquid or anything like that. Put the full recipe in the description down below as written and then I can just kind of make some notes at the end to tell you what I did to make this adaptable for the slow cooker. First thing I have to do is just brown some ground beef. This came from my freezer in case you're wondering like kind of why it looks <laughs> like that around the edges. I had it vacuum sealed. So I'm just going to brown that and then drain it when it's all cooked through before I add it to the slow cooker. If you're wondering why I'm converting this recipe to a slow cooker, it's because my mom used the slow cooker all the time. It was just really convenient for her and her work schedule. And we often ate a similar soup to this. Again, I said in the beginning of this video, the recipes I'm making today are inspired by the things I ate growing up in the 1980s, but they're not exactly the recipes. Like to make a hamburger vegetable soup, usually my mom would just kind of throw in hamburger and whatever vegetables we had. I have a liner in the slow cooker and I do use liners for cleanup purposes. I love this slow cooker, okay? They do not make it anymore. And when we moved, there was like a little hairline crack that formed in the crock. And I still haven't been able to find a replacement crock, but I just don't want to give this up. So the liners have kind of helped me in that way too. Whenever I want to use this big slow cooker, I just put in a liner and it's fine. So I may just keep it this way forever. But Smart Take actually sent me their liners to try. And I wanted to show you what the packaging looks like first off. You get 30 of them. Usually when I go to the grocery store, I see packages of like four or five. And when you're using your slow cooker a lot like I do, you need more than that. <laughs> and I kind of love how they're packaged inside too. So you can see they're individually folded and they're really easy to pull out one. The liners that I've gotten in the past are kind of like a tissue box where you pull one out and sometimes it just sticks. Most of the time it just sticks to the next one and you just pull a whole bunch of them out. So I actually really do love how these are packed up in the box. Sometimes those little things make a huge difference to me. <laughs> I like these so far and I know they're gonna have them on sale on Amazon, I think starting tomorrow. I will double check on that date and put it on the screen here so you know what the sale is like but you can get a box of 30 for $11.55 starting, I believe, tomorrow. So let's get this soup started. I have my ground beef here that I just browned and I went ahead and drained that. So we're gonna put that in the slow cooker. I know I've made hamburger soup before. Each variation is a little bit different. This one uses some frozen mixed vegetables and this is 10 ounces. I actually measured that because the bag that I had from the store had 16 ounces in it. so. Just wanted to get that right. Then there's this can of stewed tomatoes. Didn't have the easiest time finding this. I usually just use like regular diced tomatoes. Also, it says sliced stewed tomatoes. That's the only kind I can find at the store I was at. So let's see what those actually look like. These scissors are clean, by the way. Yeah, they're kind of like slices of tomatoes in a can. So <laughs> have you ever tried this trick? I've seen it before. I don't think I have tried it, but we're going to, where you just kind of like cut up the tomatoes in the can 
with your clean kitchen scissors. These kitchen scissors are wonderful, by the way. They do come apart completely so that I will be able to wash them easily. Um, they're from OXO. I'll link them in the description down below. I use them all the time. And I don't have to take them out of the can and cut them up that way. So they'll be a little bit more diced up. Oh, so that you can kind of like look into the pot and see what's going on in there. Also have two cups of just water, just plain old water, an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. Just one more ingredient, a quarter cup of onion soup mix. I don't use a ton of onion soup mix, but I do know that it pops up pretty frequently in vintage recipes. Give that a good stir. That's basically like your salt, your seasoning, whatever. It's got some like beef bouillon powder in it, so it's gonna do a lot of heavy lifting in this recipe, I think. Can't do it from back there. <laughs> so I'm gonna go for high for two hours, and then I'll check it. Um, my soup is simmering away in the crock pot, and I'm gonna get to work on a sandwich. We ate a lot of soup and sandwiches when I was a kid, especially grilled cheese sandwiches. And I found this recipe I really, really wanna try because it sounds like a very fancy grilled cheese sandwich. And that is hot French cheese sandwiches. I mean, doesn't that just sound great? So basically it looks like I'm making a cheese spread out of some like sharp cheddar cheese and some other things, spreading it on rye bread and then baking it in the oven. It just sounds so delicious to me. And so I just really wanted to give it a try. It's like a little bit of a spin on, of course, what I would have eaten growing up, but similar enough and something that would really pair well with a nice hot soup. Honestly, this day has really turned into like the perfect day for some soup and a sandwich. It's a little gloomy out there. I'm ready. It says combine first five ingredients and those first five ingredients, we've got some sharp cheddar cheese. Fingers crossed this bowl is large enough. Some soft butter. I just have a good feeling about this recipe. An egg. So that's what, one, two, three, four and five are garlic powder and onion powder. And it just says beat at medium speed of electric mixer until smooth. I'm at this consistency right now, and I think that is where I'm gonna go with it. It's, you know, smooth and buttery and stuff, and it's got like flecks of cheese in it. Because it said, use your electric mixer, like I think this is okay. I mean, if they wanted me to pulverize it or something completely, completely, you know, I could have used a food processor, but I think this is gonna work out okay. So this recipe uses white or rye sandwich bread. I got some rye bread, but it is a little bit bigger than your standard sandwich bread. So I think I'm gonna, start with the amount of spread they say in the recipe and see what that looks like. I might add a little bit more. Those look good. Okay. Spread about one tablespoon cheese mixture on each bread slice. Well, so the first bread slice, we're gonna take that away, set it aside. So, okay, that's a little bit of a heaping tablespoon. Let's try that. I don't wanna do, you know, too much. I don't wanna go overboard. Once I add the second slice of bread, I actually have to put more cheese spread on it. So let's see what that looks like. I think I could stand to add just like a tiny bit more, like maybe a teaspoon. I'm trying to get this all the way to the edges. I think we have a nice even amount of coverage there. Top with remaining bread slice and then spread remaining cheese mixture on top. I'm making one sandwich. This actually makes a lot more sandwiches. So I'm not gonna spread that amount of remaining cheese mixture. Let's just maybe go for like a similar amount to what we used on the inside of the sandwich, maybe a little less. I've never made a sandwich quite like this one. It just sounds delicious to me though. These just seemed a little bit different and a little bit special. Sprinkle with paprika. So I've got just some sweet paprika here. You could maybe also use like spicy paprika if you want, make it a little bit different. You could maybe add some cayenne, but again, I, I usually like to try these pretty close to the recipes. I say I make it about 90% of the way. So there is my fancy cheese sandwich, and I have to bake this in a 400 degree oven for 10 to 12 minutes. Hello, beautiful sandwich. <laughs> Look at that. That looks so delicious. Wow. Toasty as heck. I really, really hope that this tastes as good as it looks because it looks amazing.
Everything smells incredible. <laughs> like I'm dying to try this toasty, cheesy sandwich. I'm gonna go for the soup first. This looks very similar to what my mom would have made. Probably the most similar out of any hamburger soup that I've made on this channel. Mmm. That has a really great flavor, just kind of like right off the bat. I didn't add any additional seasonings or salt. That onion soup mix is really kind of like what's what's seasoning it here. Let's try another bite. It's very hot, but it's very good. Mm. That's a keeper. Yeah, and it also didn't make like 10 gallons of soup. It made like a manageable amount of soup. So that is a good one. I gotta show you this sandwich again. There's no way that can't be good, right? <laughs> I'm going right in. I'm going right in. Oh, even the... I didn't even show you the bottom part. Look how wonderfully toasty that that got. Wow, game on. <laughs> Why have I not made this before? Wow, <laughs> that is so dang good. One thing about this recipe I did not mention that I probably will do because it sounds perfect it says you can make these sandwiches ahead of time, wrap them in wax paper and freeze them. And then just like thaw them and bake them. Make ahead sandwiches that are this good. Sign me up. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't made anything like this before. I feel like you could mix up the cheeses. You could use multiple cheeses. I'm getting all kinds of ideas from this sandwich. <laughs> Where have you been all my life? So that was my full day of meals from the 1980s. Maybe not quite as many recipes, but I just, I wanted to kind of bring up some 1980s nostalgia. One thing I forgot to mention, I did pick up a few items on my little field trip and I'll go ahead and share those with you when I'm ready to share my final thoughts. So I did pick up a couple of items at the salvage yard and half price books that I wanted to share with you before we get into talking about the cookbook I used. From the salvage yard, we got these. <laughs> I love vintage mugs. I kind of have a problem. <laughs> I could use a different mug every single day for probably months. I haven't really counted, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to count how many I have. But I saw these on their Facebook page and I was just like, I really hope they still have them when I visit. I just think the design is very cute, like with this like rooster. I love a pedestal mug. I just love them. You may see this pop up in a future video. These were $4 a piece. I thought that was pretty good. Although I do remember the days when I could go thrifting and find a phenomenal vintage mug for like a quarter. <laughs> Those days are over. It's pretty rare that, that I get that kind of deal, but I am happy with these. I am thrilled that they still had them and that I could pick them up. You did see this one when I went to Half Price Books. I already have this book. I have already cooked from this book on this channel. I made the male chauvinist chili and I will go ahead and link that in the description down below. But I am planning for Croctober. I'm planning ahead. I'm gonna be cooking from this book again and I wanted to purchase a second copy so that I could do a giveaway. So I got this for a couple bucks, you know? It's exactly like the one I have and I thought that might be kind of fun to be able to give this away. So definitely tune in in October when I'm doing some crock pot recipes because you could possibly get this book. And then this is one I don't have, Edna E.B. Heller's Dutch Cookbook. Which edition is this? It says copyright 1960. This is the 19th printing. This was reprinted in 1978, but it looks like the original might've been from 1960. I just thought the cover was really catchy. I do have a couple of Dutch and like Pennsylvania Dutch cookbooks. Edna E.B. Heller right there. I love that photograph. This looked like you know, kind of a cool cookbook to have to add to my collection. And it was, I believe, yeah, it was a dollar for my final half price books find. Yes, I also have this book already. I've also cooked from this book already on this channel. This is the book I used for my full day of 1960s meals, like the very first one of those that I did for that decade and not the last. We're gonna have more 1960s meals coming in the future. But this particular McCall's cookbook came in four different colors and I have the yellow one and they have this green one. I'm really, really wanting those four different colors and this is only $2. So, you know, the, the yellow edition that I have, I actually got for $5 and I thought that was a great price. Couldn't say no to $2. So now I have the yellow and the green. I'm looking for the blue and the red. Again though, I really wanna find them in the wild. That's part of the fun of it for me. I probably could go and search for them on like Etsy or eBay, but I'm just kind of in it for the hunt on these. <laughs> now we get to Southern Living 
1982 annual recipes. It is the only Southern Living cookbook I have. The recipes in it seem very, very solid. I find that these type of books that are like a compilation of people who contribute recipes. So, you know, it's kind of like a community cookbook, but it's more like people contributed recipes to a specific publication like Southern Living, or you'll find these for like Taste of Home. And I really enjoyed the recipes that I made. So the egg salad, let's start there. We'll just go in order. That egg salad, it was delicious. The flavor was really good. I would change two things that I did. If I could find cream style cottage cheese and you know, I didn't have to make a substitute, I probably would make it with that, like of course, because the results might've been different. Not something I was able to source here. So if I make it again, and I have to use a substitute where I like puree the cottage cheese. I would do it a little differently. Like I could have drained some of the liquid away from the cottage cheese before I pureed it and that probably would have helped. Or the other thing, I, I mean, I could have just consumed it right away. And I think for ease purposes, for like making it easier, that's probably what I would do. The flavors were delicious. The seasonings, like I really liked them. It was just that the texture the next day, it got very liquidy. So it didn't really translate well into a sandwich. So I like had some the, even the day after that with some crackers and it was like even more liquidy. Good flavors. I would try to do some things to change the consistency a little bit, but I was kind of working with the ingredients that I was able to get my hands on. The vegetable burger soup, again, really great flavor, really easy to put together, very similar to one that my mom might have made, only a lot of her vegetables probably would have been home canned and I used frozen. I do like the flavor of that onion soup mix in there. It was really good. It was very tasty. I never think to use onion soup mix. Pretty good recipe, but by far, <laughs> by far, those hot French cheese sandwiches. Oh my goodness, so good. I really loved them. I, I don't typically think of making a sandwich like that with a cheese spread and then kind of broiling it, but it was fantastic. It was really good. I could see that being delicious any time of year, but like in the winter, especially like when it gets cooler and having that with like a bowl of soup, tomato soup, vegetable soup, whatever, they just would go together so, so well. A little different, a little fancier than your typical grilled cheese. Out of the recipes I made for this video, like top, top of the line, like gonna make that again, probably gonna make a few of those ahead to throw into the freezer. I'll share a couple photographs and things in this book. Like these, these are, Wonderful. Meet the Southern Living Food Staff, 1982-1983 style. Look at all the bows! All of those bows on those blouses like at the neck. <laughs> Fantastic. No notes. As for pictures of food, I don't think any of the things that I made from this book had photos, but I'll just pick a few to show you that I haven't already, you know, showed you. What is that? I don't know. It looks like a green soup or like a kale smoothie. I'm not really sure. It's the greenest soup I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Look at all these things right here. We've got that like lovely country blue. Do you all remember how popular that sort of pale slaty country blue was? This is more of a sky blue. I think this is like the precursor, but then we also have this picture in the background with a cow on it. Hi, hi, nostalgia there. What do we got for the holidays? Let's let's look at a holiday recipe if they have any like shown in here. Yeah, we got like some sort of spice cake there. What are you? Hummingbird cake. Oh, heck yeah. Hummingbird cake and Southern living like that to me, like perfect. That goes hand in hand. This was a really fun one for me personally, just because I got to revisit, you know, a little, a little piece of when I was growing up. If you love cookbooks and recipes from the 1980s, I have an entire playlist and I will link it in the description down below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post videos about food, vintage cookbooks, and retro recipes every week. Thanks again and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.